Folks, welcome back. You may remember the last time we were together. We were working on this beautiful Radeon R9 295X2 that came to us in not working condition. And what we concluded was the problem was this exploded capacitor, which you can see here removed from the board, that was on the back of the car. And that capacitor was causing a 100 ohm short to ground on our number two 12 volt rail. You may remember what I explained was, this GPU is powered from this PCIe connector, and this GPU is powered from this connector, and they're separate as long as they're separate coming from the power supply. So if, if the power supply has this as all one rail, they're obviously connected. But on this rail, we had a 100 ohm short to ground, which would explain why our GPUs didn't work. Uh, you wouldn't have 12 volts if you had a short to ground like that, and that would cause nothing to power up. So. If we flip the card over, we can see here where we removed that capacitor. And we had to stop at that point because I didn't have a replacement capacitor to solder in its place. I now have those replacement capacitors and we're ready to solder this onto the board and test the card, fingers crossed, to see if that's fixed our problem. Now, before we can do that, we need to clean up the pads there and get the remains of the lead-free solder and the uh, if there's any remains of the leads from the old capacitor, we need to get that off of there too. And get the pads nice and clean and tinned with our new leaded solder, which is much easier to work with. So, I'm going to go ahead and fire up my soldering station here. And we'll let that warm up. So we'll let that go ahead and heat up. But in the meantime, let's take just a quick look and remind ourselves of what our situation is. So if we look at our number one 12 volt rail, the one that powers our number one GPU, our resistance to ground on that one maxes out around three ohms, or sorry, 3000 ohms. See this? Climbs up to 3K and then it keeps climbing slowly. And what's happening is it's charging this bank of capacitors. And uh, as it charges the capacitors, the resistance increases. But once it gets them charged as high as it can get them, it stops. And then you see the, the resistance behaves like that. But if we measure this other set, our resistance is quite a bit higher. It behaves similarly where it climbs, but it's much higher. Now. Obviously, this rail is different from that rail and that we're missing this capacitor here. So we're going to go ahead and install a new one and see if that fixes our issue. So let's set our multimeter aside. All right, soldering iron is heated up. Where's my flux? Here's my flux. Pull a little bit of flux on there. All right, get my soldering iron here. Let's see if we can zoom you in a little bit here. All right, got you zoomed in there. So our first order of business is to use the solder wick to clean the pads. Go ahead and do that. And this makes a whole bunch of nasty smelling smoke from the flux burning off. There we go, we'll set our wick aside here. And there we've got our pads cleaned well enough that I think we can solder our new capacitor onto the board. So let's dig one of our capacitors out. I got 12 capacitors, which is enough to do all of the capacitors, I think, on the entire board. So if this works, I'm seriously considering just replacing all of them. It'll be a pain in the neck, and I'm not gonna make you watch me replace all 12 of them. 12? There may be 14, actually. Yeah, like, I may have to order a few more. Um, but I think the rest of the card should be good enough to test with. Anyway, I got a bunch of capacitors here in case I need to replace more than just that one. And they come in these tape reel things. So that, um, normally when these are manufactured, they're in this big long reel. And when you buy just 12 of them, they just snip you off a length of the, uh, the reel. 
So, we got our capacitor here. And one of the nice things about soldering something this size, let me turn this this way for my, let's make it easier to solder. These have a polarity, and so you gotta make sure that you get them the right way. And if we notice in the rest of the bank, the positive side is facing that way. So we're gonna make this one face that way too, which is how it faced when the card came to us. But one of the nice things about soldering something this large is that you can just stick it on there with tweezers and solder each end with the soldering iron, and you don't have to use a hot air station, which on pads this size with this much copper and this many components in this area takes forever and runs the risk of damaging something else. The soldering iron is much more precise. Actually, hang on. Let's turn on our uh, smoke extractor too. So, I'm gonna take our solder, tin the pad one more time. That. And then we get our capacitor here. And we hold it in position, heat the solder up. Alright, maybe that'll work. Let's turn the card around and do the other side. Let's reheat this side one more time. This should now be good enough that we can at least test to see if our resistances are back in the ballpark of what we expect. So I'm going to stop the cameras and let this cool down for a few minutes. And then I'll come back and we'll go ahead and test the resistances and see how it did. So don't go anywhere. Okay, you can see that our other 295X2 has materialized on the bench next to us. Uh, if you didn't see the first episode, you should be aware I have two of these dead cards. Neither one of these cards works as far as we know, but our card has now cooled down such that we can take accurate resistance measurements. So let's take a measurement on our patient here. And what we see is we climb up to three and we keep going and keep going, and we keep going. It goes up to 20 or so and starts coming back down. If we test our other rail, my cat would really like to come in here and join us. If we test our other rail, that one goes up to three, as we talked about before, okay? Now, we have another card here which is complete and not working, but there's no obvious damage to it that we can see from out here. So we're going to use it to check and basically take a sanity check for the resistances that we see on this card. As far as we know, there's something minor somewhere in this card that's causing it to not work, and it's not like the GPU is shorted to ground, and I know that because I've tested. So, if we test this rail, remember this is the one that goes up to 3,000 on our patient, we see similar behavior. See that? Goes up to 3,000 or 3,200 and stops. Now, if we test this rail, let's see what we get. This one behaves the same way as our patient. So we know that one of two things is the case here. Either the same thing or very similar is wrong with both of these cards, which is a distinct possibility. It's totally possible that there's some sort of pattern failure that happens on these cards that is the reason that I have two dead ones here. Uh, or we've eliminated the problem on this card and that resistance behavior is normal for the reason that the circuits are just not perfectly symmetrical, which is totally possible. Uh, it's possible that there's some other business that's wired up to this side that's not wired up to this side, like the, uh, the PLX bridge or something. At any rate, I think this is about the best we can do without plugging the card in and powering it up and testing it 
to see which voltage rails that are supposed to be present actually are and which ones are missing, or if it just works now. So we're gonna put card B, this guy, aside, and I'm gonna reinstall the cooler on the GPUs just to be on the safe side. Um, and then we're gonna plug the card into the test bench and power it up. So you sit tight while I, I do that. Um, this will take me a minute. folks, we've got our card reassembled with the cooler installed. We've got the card plugged into our test bench machine here. We've got our power connectors and our PCIe riser cable plugged in and the monitor. You can see our monitor here is in standby mode ready to go. So let's turn our power supply on. Cross your fingers. We got fan spin on the, uh... Spin? Ah! Yes! All right, look at that. So, there's some odd stuff going on here. Uh, it's almost like the BIOS is in a different language or something, uh, which may indicate that the card is not exactly functional, but it's at least functional enough to produce an image. So we're going to call that a huge victory because I don't think this would have produced an image before. Full disclosure, I did not test it because I detected that short. But we're producing an image, so at least there's that. I'm going to go ahead and shut this off now. You may remember I didn't install the, cool the rest of the cooling system. I just installed the CLC. And I want to make sure that we don't accidentally cook the VRMs or something in the process of me sitting here talking to you. But we're going to call this a victory for now. And in episode three, we'll get to cleaning the card up and reinstalling the cooler and plugging it back into the system and we'll, we'll see if we can't get the operating system running and some drivers installed. But for now, I think that's an episode. Uh, if you've got this problem where you can visibly see that a capacitor in the 12 volt rails on your graphics card has exploded, it's worth the, the effort of trying to replace it because chances are just that didn't damage anything else. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting, and as always, I will see you in the next one.